Hello, and welcome to Recapping with Delora and Ashley. Please follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Recapping Podcast. Also, rate, review, and subscribe to our show on your favorite podcast platform. We're on all the things. We want to hear your thoughts on the movies and shows we review. Leave us a comment on Apple Podcasts or our YouTube channel, and we will read them during the show. Or reach out to us on social media. We love talking all things entertainment and pop culture with you. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you. What's up, what's up, what's up, Delora? First recap of February, meaning first recap of this Black, Black, Blackity Black, Black History Month. How you feeling? I mean, I'm feeling great because I'm Black, I mean, right? <laughs> but this recap should be interesting. It should be interesting. We are recapping, guys. Low down, dirty shame. Kicking it live like it ain't no thing. I don't even think I realized when I watched it this time that he really had a theme song. So it's a low down, dirty shame. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Uh-huh. Released back in November of 1994. Had you seen this one before this recap? How long had it been since you watched it, if so? I've never seen this movie in my life until... Okay. You told me to watch it. <laughs> okay. So this is going to be real interesting to hear your thoughts if you are seeing it for the first time in 2024. Yes, ma'am. All right. Well, let me give you guys a quick summary. An ex-cop, now a private detective, takes on the search for the million stolen by a drug lord. This film was written and directed by the one and only Keenan Ivory Wayans. This film at the time made $30 million on a $10 million budget. So okay, happy. Okay. Yes. So our cast, we have Keenan Ivory Wayans starring as Shane. We have Jada Pinkett Smith as Peaches. We have Sally Richardson as Angela. We have Corwin Hawkins as Wayman, which by the way, rest in peace. I did not realize that he passed away only a few months shy of the premiere of this film. And Wayman is the character of the film for me. So rest in peace. Oh. Yeah. Charles S. Dutton as Roth Miller and Andrew Devolf as Mendoza. Reviews. Rotten Tomatoes critics were not kind. 4%. Critic score, 70% audience score, though, and 87% of Google users gave this film a thumbs up. Delora, what is your grade for this throwback recap of A Low Down Dirty Shame? I would like to note that when it comes to Rotten Tomatoes, especially for older films, it's it's only 23 reviews for the critics. And yes, is that 4%? I just feel like, I feel like they don't really capture... Um, the a essence of some essence. of these, yeah, of these films, you know. So mm -hmm. I just want to throw out that caveat. So I will say this about a low down, dirty shame. The Wayans, sp specifically Keenan Ivory Wayans, they are true mavericks in the world of Hollywood, and the things that they have done for the black community in Hollywood has been phenomenal and they are honestly the blueprint of a lot of things that we've come to love and learn today uh watching this film i'm like oh this film existed for you know this film walked so bad boys could run you know yep. what i mean yeah um and even rush hour you know it's not as buddy buddy but it just and certain you see, elements you see him following the blueprint do, i can't speak the blueprint of shaft right so it's like yes of shaft building and, on building and, and we could even say uh eddie murphy with beverly hills cop as very well Very true very true so you know give credit where credit is due and then also the lineup i love seeing people we have you know continue to love and and uh, follow their careers like Jada Pickett Smith seeing her so young talking about I'm 22 I'm about to be 23 I'm like oh sis was a baby because she yes. just celebrated her 50th birthday like a couple of years ago <laughs> yes. and even the evolution of talent with Sally who played Angela she's a prolific director television director okay I love seeing that I am 
not going to rate this movie, however, because not during Black History Month. (laughs) I did not watch this movie as a youth. This is my first time watching it as a grown adult. And so all I have are my 2020, 2024 eyes. Yeah. And they're... I'm just not rating it, Ashley. So what's your grade for a lowdown, Dirty Shane? Well, as I mentioned, this is one of, if arguably not my favorite 90s Black film. I get so much joy and humor out of this movie every time I watch it. But it had been a little bit since I sat and watched it in full. Because you know, a lot of times when you have your favorites, you remember them a certain way and then you'll yeah. catch pieces. But I actually, guys, put the DVD in the DVD player and watch this movie in full again. So some of the things that kind of were humorous to me were like the sound effects, right? Of the punching and the fighting and stuff. And I'm like, you could definitely tell this was a specific era, especially in terms of like technology and what was available. Um, But it still holds up so well to me, like I said, with like keeping me laughing and with the general humor and with these super memorable lines that I have from this film. So for nostalgia's sake and all that, it's still an A for me. Like I love, a low down dirty shame I love Jada Pinkett Smith and I miss this right like her being more thought of for being an actress than for her personal life which I'm gonna get into when I talk about my hidden gems because I finally finished her memoir so (laughs) I love this movie and I'm glad that we're gonna get a chance to talk about it for just a little bit so with that spoiler alert guys we'll go ahead and get into the good good of a low down dirty shame All right, so we start this film with a bang, literally. Our main character, Shame and Peaches, interrupt some type of diamond deal to recover them for an insurance company, right? And Shame, as I mentioned, he's a private detective, and Peaches is his secretary assistant, whatever you want to call her. What did you think of this whole intro of these two characters and kind of the shenanigans that they're getting into, like, right off the jump? Well, I have to say specifically for Jada's character, I'm like, there's no way she's actually a cleaning lady. The way she was busting in those rooms, commented, <laughs> commentating <laughs> on the happenings behind the door. Um, I thought she she reminded me of a little chihuahua, if I'm going to give an analogy, just very loud, very in your face, want to be seen. And you know, you could tell that he's a badass, you know, he's, this is where I made the bad boys comparison. Um, he gets the job done, but recklessly with mm-hmm. some notable damage. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's kind of like, are you happy that you completed the mission or are you upset that, you know, you got to replace your car or, you know, in bad boys, they, there's like a explosion every 15 minutes. <laughs> so, some way or another there was not a car that michael bay did not want to blow up it seems like (laughs) exactly but i jada pinkett smith steals the show from me from the jump with this introduction to the movie i think that her character was so strong and her presence was so strong even though to your point she's so tiny like she's just itching to be in more of the action and you know in this life or death situation because you have all these guys with all these guns and I'm just thinking how are y'all gonna even get out of this alive right and she just was fearless and so she kind of just captured me from the beginning of the movie uh every time I watch it and obviously Peaches can also be on our podcast right because that fandom she had when she was on the phone talking to her friend about the soaps (laughs) You know what I was reminded of? I'm like, man, we don't really watch soaps like that like we used to back in the day. Like the way our grandmas and aunties used to watch them. The days of our lives. I will never forget the summer. I was probably in sixth grade. And I think I was hanging out with my grandma that summer. She got me hooked on days of our lives. I mean, our character was, I don't remember everybody's names, but he was an awful husband. Then he died and then he came back. I was like, what is this? What is going on? The soaps. 
Yeah, it was definitely my grandma, too, who got me into them. She watched all the CBS lineups. So she watched Young and the Restless, Bold and the Beautiful, As the World Turns, and Guiding Light. And then because I was working for a CBS affiliate station over lunch, I got back into Young and the Restless and the Bold and the Beautiful for a period of time, me and one of my coworkers. Wow. And she wow. got so into it, though. I was like, girl, you should start. You should do a blog. You should do a podcast because you yeah. are so into this. And I know the fandom would gravitate towards, you know, you, listen, you talking about this on a regular basis and your perspective. Yep. So Peaches could definitely come join us on the pod and talk about some things with the level of emotion that she had about Chad in particular and his storyline with Donna. We will so. never take it outside of our <laughs> four walls, though. Well, we gonna get to that because I got to ask. I got to ask about that when we get to uh, her her in-person interaction. So Shane's business was not doing great. He was behind on bills and he couldn't even afford to pay Peaches. She up here folding his drawers, talking about, I got a little bit of money stashed, I'll be all right. When his old cop buddy, Sonny, shows up and proposes that they work together to bring down a drug kingpin named Mendoza, who Shane had thought that he had already killed. He agrees to help and track down Angela, who is Shane's ex and was also dating Mendoza. Who has a love triangle between a cop and a drug kingpin? Only in the movies. Only in the movies. <laughs> The Sally Richardson as Angela. I remember as a kid, I could not get over that she had her own theme music. I was like, she's like a live Disney princess because she had the hair. She was so beautiful. And then every Very time she beautiful. would pop up, it would be the da -do -da -do. And I was like, oh, my God, <laughs> Angela is that girl. <laughs> she also married another beautiful person. Um, her husband is he was always the light skinned man. In, in TV shows, what is yes. his name? Uh, Don Dre Whitfield. I got a chance to see them up close and personal at the Black Film Festival that I went to last year. And Beautiful, they beautiful. Are, they yeah, are. I believe it. So let's get to the scene you were referencing when Peaches runs into Chad on Rodeo Drive. She punches this man out for what he did on the show. Is there any actor or actress, not to say you would punch them out, that you would feel some type of way about just based off of their fictional characters? So again, me as a young person, so let's say like 13 years old, when 101 Dalmatian live action movie came out, the way I hated Cruella, though, <laughs> played by the great... Glenn Close yes. was next level. I hated that character so much that I would have definitely given Glenn Close the side eye. Now, many years have passed. She has done many roles. So <laughs> we're in a good place. But that's the first one that comes to mind. If I were to think of like any more recent, oh, this is my favorite. Also, as a young person watching Ghost, I hated Tony. Tony, aka Fitz from freaking Scandal. Yep. It took him, it took me watching Scandal probably for a couple of seasons for me to get over his character from Ghost. Because even with his role, as shady as he is, spoiler alert, he's the president, he has multiple affairs. I'm like, he couldn't even be sugarcoated because he still was doing something shady he wasn't supposed to do. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. That was a, that was a transformation. I will I will say that. You know, a big one for me. Speaking of ghost power, when I finally really got into power, Angela from Power, <laughs> who had an affair with Ghost, yeah, come episode two. Sorry, spoiler alert, guys. Oh, and I know she was getting all sorts of threats and people were coming for her in real life. I never went that hard, but I was thinking like, if I ever saw her in person, I would definitely be side eyeing her because I hated her character so much in that show. I feel like people feel this way about Danny Glover from his mm. roles from Color Purple Mister. and such. People Mister. have not been happy about some of the portrayals that he's done. I don't think most of the time for me to the point of Peaches, it has really 
affected how I feel about the actor so much. So it's sometimes when you see them in another project, like remember we talked about this with um, the transition from Euphoria to Saltburn for oh, uh, Jacob, Jacob and yes. how it's hard to see him now as this nice character because we saw him so much as Nate and he was such a horrible a presence. Yes. And so that is where it gets more tricky for me is seeing them outside of their role to your point, like with Fitz, then it is like, if I saw you in the flesh, I, I'd be ready to, you know, pounce. It's just like, <laughs> it's hard to see you once you try to transition to some other type of character. It's like, mm, nah, you still ain't shit. You know what I'm saying? I we still know you. We not at- Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we know how the stories go, though. Some of those people be on the stories, Victor, some of them, till they die, right? So you are that That's character. That's true. Very true. Victor and Newman, it, guys, from Young and the Restless. If yes, you yes. <laughs> and they don't really be working much outside of those shows. Like, I don't know. Some people I don't know are lifers. Schedule. Yeah. Some people are lifers, for sure. But I feel like Peaches should have called, would have called, not should have, would have called an assault charge. Uh, punching that man out on Rodale Drive like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. <laughs> so when Shane popped up at one of Mendoza's old associates places, I was thinking like, he's pretty reckless. Like the initial setup of the movie, you get the sense, oh, he's doing this for his job. And so, you know, he, he was prepared. And this, it just felt like, what is stopping these people from killing you? Like you're no longer a cop. You no longer have the protection of a badge. Why would you just roll into one of his old associates places by yourself? Yeah, I agree. He he can hold his own, but then he gets jumped when he makes it home. So I was like, you got to watch your back a little bit more. Peaches ain't going to be able to really protect you like you need and you don't have another partner. So what's going to stop you from dying quickly in this movie? You know, Peaches was crushing on shame. And she made her move when he came over to get cleaned up after he got jumped. And he turned her down. I have in parentheses, what? Because he said they have nothing in common, such as who they believe is the greatest heavyweight boxer of all time. In my notes, I said, Delora, Keenan took liberties with this script. Because, <laughs> yeah, what? Ashley, growing up in Michigan, you're either a Michigan fan or a Michigan State fan. And I was so in my convictions of like whoever I dated could not root for the team I'm not rooting for. I'm amazing blue girl by my, you know, uh, just FYI. Um, I'm like the person that I need to be with needs to at least be on the same page as me on this or it's just just not going to work. Wow. That's the most frivolous thing that really mattered to me. Now, some people go really hard with their sports teams, die hard. My brother, my, one of my cousins, they are, they have a Ohio State-Michigan rivalry for sure. Um, so I get it. But I still just felt like man to woman, he ain't turning peaches down over <laughs> no Mike Tyson versus Muhammad Ali. I, most men know, but again, I've known men who have been entirely too particular. I'm like, do you even like women? Like, I just. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I guess there are some men who would be like this, but I was like, oh, he's wild. Like I, that it just, just seemed unfathomable to me. Like, give me a stronger case of how y'all don't get along. Why did you come to your assistant's house in the middle of the night anyway? Ooh, how about that? But I will also say, I wonder if it's the age gap thing too, right? Like he grew up with her and he's seen her in his particular light. When do you flip the switch, right? And, Indeed. That did yeah. seem a little respectful with the, oh, I met you when you were 16. You know, I'm, I'm processing the fact that you a grown woman now. That did seem a little respectful, but he still checked her out and looked at her ass as she went up them steps. So how respectful is he really? <laughs> That's why I'm like, y'all are fooling. What, what are we actually doing here? Yes. I have Wayman, uh, bold case exclamation points. Like I said, I love me some Wayman in this movie. Peach's roommate with some of the most memorable scenes and lines. Coffee is good with cream, but better one is black. Um, <laughs> <I'm nice. laughs> I just felt like he has such a fun, great, presence and dynamic and humor that his character yes. brought into the movie what'd you think about Wayman oh for sure I did think it was a lot but again 
coming to it with 20, 24 eyes, it, it was a lot. And I just hope that it wasn't too much of a caricature. You know what I mean? Like in some ways you can say they were ahead of their time in terms of incorporating somebody, a part of the LGBTQ community. Yeah. But then at the same time, it's like, are you laughing with me or laughing at me? You know what I mean? And, and that's where I was a little concerned, but he was funny. He was funny. I get that though. Cause you do have to sometimes look back and be like, Oh, that was a bit cringy, right? How are people going to feel about this over a period of time? But I always was laughing with Wayman. Like I, I thought it was Mm -hmm. hilarious the way he made fun of shame. I thought it was hilarious that, I mean, he's even with the representation within the LGBTQ plus community, thankfully there's a broader sense now because Wayman was a showman in the film, right? Like he he does, he's a performer. So he's yes. always kind of on and performing, yeah. except when you saw him at work, you know? So yeah. that's one thing about the character too. It's like, I know that person because he did drag. And you know what I'm saying? He was a, he was a performer type of character and I freaking loved him so much. So again, rest in peace. I didn't like how handsy Shane was with Angela when he tracked her down at her hotel, tossing her around and stuff. I was like, uh-uh. I didn't remember this. And I also don't appreciate this Keenan Ivory Wayans. I agree. It was doing a lot. But it turns out that this whole situation with tracking her down was a setup because Sonny was in cahoots with Mendoza and Angela had actually been in protective custody through the DEA. So Sonny and Mendoza were trying to take her out so that she didn't testify against him. This is why I say this is definitely a a Shaft influence because when he finally cleaned himself up, he turned into Shaft real quick. Ball head, glasses, suited and booted. He looked good. He looked good. Even for today's standards, he looked good. Like, I, I thought the suit was nice. The color, I appreciate, uh, you know, it wasn't black. It was that dark blue. So fresh and so clean. And where you been hiding this Porsche? Like, <laughs> the Porsche came out beautiful. Right, because he was driving that busted convertible. Mm-hmm. Yep. And throughout the whole movie, that had been a big point. Shane, you look like shit. I'm like, so he was looking and dressing like this when he was in the police force? I will say, I had to go back and Google. I was like, is Keena Ivory Wayans usually bald? Like, for some reason, I don't re- envision him bald, but he has Girl, been bald you didn't... for a long Girl, time. I forgot you didn't watch In Love and Color. Thanks, uh, man. <laughs> but yes, mainly, he did have hair in the beginning, but he's mainly bald, for sure. Yeah, I think I think a Damon as always being bald, but I couldn't remember oh, yeah. Keenan was always my favorite bald. Wayne, my favorite Wayans. So Peaches was left to babysit Angela and uh, that shit Who was Who thought sideways. that was a good idea? Who thought that was a good idea? Yeah. What was your thoughts on their exchange? I mean, <laughs> I did feel like Angela was stuck up, but I mean, she was absolutely gorgeous and used to men eating from her, her hand. So, I mean, she acted accordingly, you know what I mean? Whereas Peaches was definitely scrappy, less refined. And obviously buying for the same guy. So yeah, mess ensued. (laughs) I was like, Angela came in hot, right? But then I started thinking she picked that fight intentionally. Like she picked that fight so that she would have an excuse to leave because she was doing her own thing. Calculated. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Talking about some, what was her line to her? Something along the lines of, uh, it must hurt to see how much he, you know, cares about me because he never even mentioned you or something like that, she said. And it's like, where did this even come from? You know, but it was then definitely to your... just, yeah, just her trying to get under her skin to leave. Yeah, I agree. Angela was absolutely calculated. She was very calculated throughout the whole movie, you know, as you followed it. But yeah, I'm going to need Peaches to be a little bit more aware, but she is 22 years old and pretty pretty focused on what she was trying to get out, which was him. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate the fact that Peach was ready to throw down too. She was like, we don't need to talk. Like, do you want some of this? Like, let's just go. If you want to go, let's go. So when Shame tracks down Mendoza, they have a shootout at a nightclub he owns and he had to save old Wayman from getting shot. And I'm like, Wayman, you see this 
is not a good situation. Why are you over here? Shame, hey, like you're black. You can sense danger <laughs> <Self> better. Aware. Than this. <laughs> it's in our DNA. I'm like, yes. some don't feel right. Some don't feel right. Yes. With all the animosity between them, I'm still not sure why Mendoza didn't kill him earlier in the film, I guess, for just for the sake there wouldn't have been a film if he had. Because it seems like this all comes down to them fighting over Angela. Did you get that sense? Like, it all seemed like it was yeah. ego-driven. I mean, <laughs> Helena Troy is a story as old as time, so yeah. More than this $20 million, it's like, oh, this is all just about the fact that he was able to take your girl from you. Sonny and Mendoza kidnap Peaches as insurance but not without a fight i want to be more like peaches i was like if somebody come up in there and shoot the cops in the head i don't know if i would have it in me to like try to fight them off no no I like i would have i would have cowered in the corner but she she did her best she tried angela was playing everybody she stole that 20 million dollars from mendoza and she was right that shane still had a sweet spot for her they was about to get it on in the room together but when he found out that they had peaches and she told him let's basically leave her this was a no-go boo do you feel like angela at that moment felt betrayed by shane that he would not take her up on her offer to leave with the money and leave peaches behind to think of angela like a computer she just was glitching like she was like <laughs> what do you mean i'm not the center of your attention, your affection, your everything, because I'm everyone else's. Who is this little hood rat compared to me? To mm. what? Mm. Yeah. She definitely gave the sense that, you know, she was used to being the center of attention. But I think it also, I mean, there was a human moment for a minute when she was in the hotel room and she was saying, you know, I just know I'll never be your number one. I think a lot of women and people in relationships maybe could relate to that thought of like, I just want to be the number one priority to my partner. But in this sense, Angela's tying it in with criminality and drug money and a lot of other stuff that makes I it like, but I still like... can't root for you. It was a manipulation tactic. Though. Yeah, because I'm yeah. still not leaving my friend behind either to get killed. He was like, I'm definitely not for an F on the beach under the sun. So anyway, final brawl at the mall. Why they have to shoot up and mess up a mall? I couldn't tell you. First of all, what mall has that much flammable containers in it either? I'm like... I have never does Dick's, in all my days. Does Dix have, because that's the only like sporting goods store I could think of that's regularly in a mall. Maybe they do. They do be having firearms and stuff. So maybe they do. But it had to be some type of sporting goods store, right? Right. Something like that. Peach has got to show her stuff and fight old Angela because Angela tried to kill Shane. That was a very satisfying fight for me. I'm not going to lie to you. Was it? Yeah. Because I felt like yeah, uh, she, she got to show her stuff, but also she got to bring down this chick who've been talking all this trash. Like, I don't know. I just felt satisfied a bit with her being able to be the one to, you know, hold her own. And she's so tiny and petite. Yeah, that's like, true. Don't get it twisted. I can fight and I can <laughs> whoop your ass. Anyway, so after all is said and done, Shane and Peaches survive, right? And he takes a $5 million cut for his troubles, was he wrong and shady for stealing that money? All is fair in love and war. <laughs> and in the dealings of criminals. Because what, what do the police do with confiscated money? They be skimming off the top too. Because I thought about this. Did you start watching Griselda yet on Netflix? I have not, No. So I started it and it made me go down, you know, my usual rabbit holes. I was looking her yeah. up and then I was also looking up Pablo Escobar. Of course. You know, Pablo Escobar was was worth billions. That what happened sense. to all his money? It didn't go back into the government. What happens to this money once it's seized or whatever? What happens? Like, I was just, I, it makes me so curious about that. So I'm like, I don't really blame Shane for taking his cut. Because he did all the hard work, but it did make me wonder in real life, like, what happens with this? You don't think the government got any of Pablo's money? I, 
whatever's going to allow you to go to sleep at night. So if you are convicted by, you know, your faith and you want to return it all, that's, that's fine. And if you don't, then that's just how that cookie's going to crumble. You know, we talk, we talk about our favorite show of all time, Game of Thrones. And one of the reasons why season eight is trash is because there was no character development. And like one of, one of the things that I was hoping for was a more savvy Jon Snow, which didn't happen. He told them that he killed Daenerys and he went to jail for it when he could have just said she flew away. Cause that could have <laughs> It was just that such an unsatisfying scene. It was so unsatisfying. So there could have been so many other angles, but do you understand what I'm trying to say? It's like why Alanis- do the right thing sometimes? A Lannister would never. <laughs> a Lannister would never. For what? For why? I hear you, Dolores. Sometimes you gotta look out for number one. And you saying in this case, Shane was looking out for number again. My point beyond the the morals of it, I did all the work. I brought this whole situation down the cops ain't do nothing and i take a fee from my clients so the cops y'all were my clients in this case right so i'm gonna take my cut i'm gonna take my fee and that is what it is and peach has got her man my big question after watching this movie this time was was shame the prize delora girl because <laughs> because the way keenan wrote this story i'm like was shame the prize girl oh, and then can we say what you just said before you asked that ridiculous question um <laughs> shout out to Simone Biles husband um you were sounding real a whole lot like David Ruffin by the way <laughs> ah. <laughs> when they come to see it was me <laughs> oh that's hilarious <laughs> So you're not going to answer my question, though? No. <laughs> I was looking for a legit contemplative response from you, Girl. Delora. Girl. He had these two beautiful, gorgeous, amazing, I mean, Angela was shady AF, women. But, you know, he had to be the one who had to be worn down. So mm-hmm. I feel like the way it's written, he is. I feel like the way that this story and tale has been told, he is. So mm. kudos to the city boys. You got one. All right. Are you going to sing James Brown to Charlie after seeing this film? Just to see his reaction? I am not. No. <laughs> you should. I want this experiment because I don't think it's going to stop a dog from attacking you, but maybe James Brown music is soothing. Not the way he was singing it. <laughs> Just please. I don't have a dog right now. I can't do this experiment. So can you let us know? Bring it back to the mic, Delora, and let us know what happens. Okay. When Charlie Otis hears, <laughs> hears, some, <laughs> hears some James Brown music. All right. Any final thoughts on this throwback recap of a lowdown, Dirty Shane? Shane! I thought it was interesting that his name was Shane. Um... <laughs> I'm like, ooh, this was a choice. Um, <laughs> you know, it's always fun to see these movies as an adult because I guarantee you if I watched it as a child, a lot of things would have gone over my head. Um, but it was a lot of violence. I was like, yo, there's some real shoot 'em up blood situations going on. Obviously, I'm not deterred by it, but I just was surprised to see so much of it. And Especially because he was coming from comedy, right? It was like such yes. a departure at the time. And it was more graphic than even uh, Beverly Hills Cop, I felt like, uh, in terms of the level of violence. And there were topless women in that movie. I was like, okay, they were doing a big back in the 90s, apparently. I don't know. Sometimes I wonder, I'm like, is it teetering on black exploitation a little bit, you know? Obviously, it's not the same, right? Because we have Black people behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's where it differs. But it was it was interesting. I'm glad we got a chance to take a look at it. I know this is in the canon, and it was one that I had never seen before. So I did it. <laughs> you did it. 
introduce you to another one of the 90s era. Um, for anyone who has not seen this film, guys, I thought it was available on Sling TV for free, but it looks like it's kind of a scheduled broadcast on Sling TV. So you may catch it there. You may catch it elsewhere. If you still have your mama still has it on DVD like I do, go ahead and ask her to borrow it because I think it's one to watch. I paid three dollars on Amazon Prime to rent it for 48 hours. Just FYI. <laughs> the fact that they still charge, I feel like there should be a, a cap on how long something has been made to be able to charge you for it. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. you should not still be able to charge me for something that came out in 1994. It's 30 years ago. Okay. So I'm glad we got a chance to do this as well, Delora. Thank you for humoring me with another throwback <laughs> of a nineties classic. And yeah, that does it for a low down dirty shame. Shout out to my girl, Jada Pinkett Smith. You did your thing in this movie. Mm -hmm. Delora, let's move on to Hidden Gems for the week. What you got for the people? I have two songs this week. Y'all, I was out in Orlando, Florida, hanging out with many of them. <laughs> um, so wasn't watching much content, but I was enjoying these songs. So these are two new songs. The first one is by Fly On Up Boss. They're our favorite runny black girls on social media. You know, the whole dear Christ. <laughs> I'm about to sin again. Um, they have this new song called Candyman and it's super cute. They're really great with um, play on words and turn, turn a phrase. And I feel like, is this the first Valentine's Day type song? It's like all, all candy metaphors for being in a relationship with Yo Bay. So super, super cute. And then the second song that I've been enjoying is from Tierra Wack. She has this new song called Shower Song. Again, another playful song, pretty much sounding, pretty much saying she sounds great in the shower when she's singing Whitney, Britney, and Mariah. So it's a lot of fun. These are very fun, bubbly, irreverent songs that... I had on repeat when I was on vacation. <laughs> Very nice. Staying lifted. Yes. How about you, Ashley? What are your hidden gems? All right. I also have two. The first one is the Mr. and Mrs. Smith series available now on Amazon Prime. This is one. Really? Yeah. Hmm. This is one I have been anticipating for a while. Donald Glover, Phoebe. Was from originally. Fleabag was originally mm -hmm. attached and they had creative differences. So then Maya Erskine came in to replace her. And so I was curious because I like Maya. I've seen Maya in other projects and I really enjoyed this series. Eight episodes, I want to say it is. It's a bit of a departure from the exact storyline from the film with Brad and Angelina. Um, mm. And I enjoyed their chemistry. I enjoyed the story. I also found myself feeling something that I never thought I would feel, which is, was a slight attraction to Donald Glover. I've been seeing a lot of that. I, they're like, I, they're like, I wasn't expecting this at all. I was not expecting it whatsoever. Blame the, the swag, blame the spying, blame the, the clothes. I don't know, but he had a vibe in this show. Let me tell you that. And just overall, I just enjoyed the ride they left the they left it open-ended so hopefully we get another season but i recommend it for sure uh, for everybody to check out i tried to go back and watch the film just to catch differences but i'm team jen so i really i cut that shit off after after a few so you know what's funny one of my favorite commentators online said that it's a really really good show and they probably should have just named it something different because it's a departure from the Mr. and Mrs. Smith that we've come to know and love. And I mean, in it, your case, resent. The, no, yeah, there is there is a bit of a difference for sure in their 
relationship as well as just the 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 point of them coming together right because in the movie they were a part of rival organizations and the show yeah. they were part of the same organization so okay. there is there are some differences i don't know why it was trying to fall in line with the mr and mrs smith but it didn't take away from anything for me in particular trying to kind of follow that it just made me realize it was going to be like a spy based show which it was got it yeah so yeah i enjoyed but- it it's also interesting because of the caliber of the film type of actors versus the show. It's a, the sexiness isn't the front runner of reasons to watch, so to speak. You know what I mean? This is true. But you also get a lot more breadth and depth when you have a series than when you have a movie, right? So true. Um, true. I just, yeah, I enjoyed it. My second hidden gem is Worthy. I finally read, I actually sped through Jada Pinkett Smith's memoir. I read it in like two or three days. Okay. And I really, really enjoyed getting her perspective. I found myself laughing and finding a lot of humor in her retelling of a lot of things. I enjoyed getting the deep dive into her childhood. She spoke a lot about not just her parents, but also her grandparents and growing up in Baltimore, the start of her career, her parallel journey with Tupac in terms of their high school experience and their careers. Talked about, obviously, his unfortunate passing, got into, you know, the relationship she has with other people in Hollywood, got into her marriage with Will, got into a lot of the things that we now have seen and know in the public, also got a lot into her spiritual journey and the things that she has consumed and been a part of that have helped her and guided her in that way. And then um, a lot about her children, you know, a lot about things that they themselves are interested in her relationships with them individually. I just, I thought it was really, really good. The only thing that I've said that I did not necessarily enjoy about it was, I feel like it's an extension of Red Table Talk persona in the fact that after chapters, there's like a reflection page of her thoughts and then kind of like a prompt almost of like, can you remember a time when this Mm. or that jot this down? I I didn't come to Jada's memoir for that. I came (laughs) for her story and her experience, not kind of for that advice or reflection if she were a therapist or even like a jay shetty i think i would be more open to that experience but that's not what i was looking for but that's just me as a whole i still really really found it to be entertaining so having read the book yeah how does it compare to the salacious headlines leading up to the book drop honestly the Portions that were taken out and made salacious are the least interesting or uh, what like like built upon elements almost of her book. Right. Like that's why I said a lot of the stuff that we already know has happened. She talks about them. She gives a little bit on her perspective, but you don't get the depth that you get about her how she grew up and about her life experiences in the same way um you get some about just the dynamics in their relationship over time but it's really more so about her struggles like the fact that she dealt with depression the fact that she never really dealt with the deaths of Tupac as well as one of her other friends who unfortunately committed suicide like you oh. get a lot from just her understanding of the things that made her so unhappy in certain aspects and points in her life more so than just focusing on and also that whole thing of her supposedly being disrespectful to will and all that i didn't take any of that away Mm -hmm. from her actual telling of the book so i think it just goes to show again that you can't take snippets from headlines and snippets from interviews and think of it as the totality of someone's story because it definitely was not one more question Did you feel like it was too much Tupac? No, it wasn't too much Tupac at all, actually. And the funny thing is, is after reading it again, I even had to check myself a little bit when I've said before that I feel like she talks about him so much. People ask her about him a lot. But you think about it. Think about how many people revere and still talk about Tupac who never met him. This is somebody who was in a very substantial, deep friendship with that man right and you expect her to not honor and reminisce and talk about how special that was to her it just doesn't even really make sense so yeah it was definitely not too much Tupac in the book okay and that's it and that's it and that's it and that's it 
Thank you guys so much for listening to this episode. We appreciate you as always for sticking with us, for sharing with us. If you have any thoughts about what we recap today or anything we've talked about, please feel free to share it with us. We'd love to hear from you always. Please share this episode with your friends, family, loved ones. We appreciate you. We'll be back. But in the meantime, as always, be blessed. Bye.